Hi, my name's Scott, the Miniature Maniac, and today we're building the most epic hobby light for miniature painting. What up, Mini Family? The classic go-to solution for miniature painting hobby lights have been Ikea lamps, and for good reason. They're super cheap, you just smack some good bulbs in there and you're ready to go. But I've had a few problems with mine. Number one, I paint with the miniature elevated up high. And what that means is that the lamps and all the miniature stuff is all in my face, and it kind of crowds my head space and I can tend to bump my heads into them sometimes. Also, since lights are so close to the miniature, it casts very harsh highlights and shadows on it, making it kind of hard to see unless I orient the figure in kind of a bizarre way. Also, another issue with the lamps being so close to my face is that they tend to really overexpose my face when I'm streaming, so my face looks pure white. Now, I, I'm white, okay, I get it, I'm pale, I'm, I'm a basement lurker, but I'm not that white. Number two, the lamp's nuts need constant tightening to make sure they maintain their already pretty suboptimal height. So how do we fix these two issues? Well, really what we need to do is get the light farther away from my face and also just make it bigger. When a light source becomes bigger, it has softer highlights and shadows. Just think of an overcast day. The sun is diffused in all the clouds and you get very nice, even highlights and shadows. So a pretty cheap and simple solution for a big soft light are china balls or china lanterns. If you can figure out how to rig this up by attaching it to your desk in some way or hanging it from the ceiling, all you gotta do is get about two 16 inch china balls, stick some bulbs in them and you have really nice soft light. Since I recently finished a basement renovation, I had two CFL ballasts that were laying around and the lights for them. So I'll be using that in my particular hobby light for this video's build. If you don't happen to have CFL ballasts lying around, which I think is a pretty normal situation to be in, there are lots of lights on Amazon that go under the name of shop light and also some LED options as well that you can find that would do the exact same thing as I'm going to build in this video. You'll find those options in the description below. These are the things you'll need for the build. An extension cord, I got a 10 foot long one, a project box and a light switch cover, wire nuts, a light switch, hooks with mounts, hooks with threaded ends and nuts and washers, chain, and of course the ballast itself and some CFL tubes. I had a hard time finding good CFL tubes for my fixture, but the ones I found were 5000K and 90CRI. You can find links to all this stuff in the description below. First, what we're gonna do is take our hooks, bolts, and washers and attach them to the ballast, making a washer sandwich on either side of the ballast. You'll need two wrenches or pliers or something to grip one bolt as to tighten the other side. If you wanna be neat about it, make sure that you orient the hooks in the same direction. Next, we're gonna do some electrical work, and what that means is it's time for a disclaimer. I am not an electrician, so what that means is that this video should be taken as a guide and not a step-by-step. -step. Follow these steps at your own risk. We're gonna take the extension cord and cut off the female end, this is very important, and strip back all three wires. Special thanks to my Patreon supporters, Andrew Gilbert, Paul Lambaron, Scott O, Jacob Richards, and Robert Solberg for supporting videos like these. You guys allow me to improve the quality of the channel and build from projects like this. If you want to see how you can support these videos, hit the Patreon link in the description below. While we're watching me struggle to strip some wires, why don't you consider subscribing and I'll do a little strip for you. <laughs> we're then going to wire the whites together and the blacks together, this sounds racist, with a wire nut and electrical tape. This ballast has two power sources, so each of my wire nuts have three cables twisted in them together, but yours may vary. Finally, since we're working with a metal fixture, we'll attach the ground wire with a screw and a nut to the fixture itself. After this, we'll plot out two locations for where we're going to install our ceiling hooks, drill adequately sized holes, and install our anchors and the hooks. I have two 35 pound rated hooks for a total of 70 pounds, much more than the weight of my ballast. I then took my chain and using pliers, extracted two equal length runs of chain that put the ballast at the right height after some experimentation and hung my ballast. If you don't wanna buy heavy duty pliers, you could just have the chain cut to the right length at your home supply store. We'll then run the cable along the ceiling in a semi neat fashion to keep the wife happy and then wire in our switch. In my example, I use a metal project box and a light switch, but instead of that, you could use something as simple as a night light switch. But instead of researching this project before doing it, I kind of just jumped right in. First, I screwed the box to the desk somewhere close to the wall. 
Since this cable is going to eventually be plugged into an outlet or a surge protector, all we need to do inside the box is sever the black cable and attach one end of the black cable to one brass screw and the other half of the cable to the other brass screw. The white and green wire will pass right through the box in and into whatever implement we plug this into. Since I'm dumb and impatient, I cut the whole damn cable and then realized I would have to rewire up the white and green cables. So save yourself some time and don't be dumb like me. After this wiring is done, you should close up your project box and plug it in and hit the lights. This fixture is big, it's bright, it's out of the way, and it's fairly accurate in terms of color renditioning. If I had some complaints about this light fixture, it would be that the lights take a minute or two to warm up, and if you stare at the light fixture very intently, you can see the oscillation of the lights. The good part is, is that when you're painting, you don't notice it, and it also doesn't show up on video, unless you're recording at a very, very high frame rate, which is oftentimes used when you're capturing slow motion, which I don't really do very often, so it isn't a concern concern for me. If you have a different ballast, you may not even have this issue, but it's something that I'm experiencing with my particular model. Enough about lights, let's check out a mini person's model. It's time for some minis from somebody else. This is a super long leg. I'm gonna get some viruses. Check out Greg Vanden Bosch. All right, Greg, what you got? Greg's got a corn dude and I am digging it. I'm digging the blade. Is that non-metallic metal? I can't really. Looks like it, kind of looks like it. It looks pretty good. I dig the reflections, nice contrast uh, toward the bottom of the blade. I like the skin tones. You got a really nice natural skin tone. Looks really good. Some decent mesh photography as well to go along with it and a very nice GW scheme. I'm digging it. I also like how he has different metallic colors. It can oftentimes be a temptation to um, have all the things be silver or have all the things be gold, but no, he's got silver, gold, and brass, so good on you, Greg. Good job. Thanks for the submission, Greg. You keep painting minis. <laughs> Thanks for checking out my video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. I have another related video about hobby lamps that you can check out in the little eye in the top right hand corner of the video. If you want to support the channel, I sell t-shirts and stickers and phone cases and all kinds of weird things on my Redbubble account. Also, links in the description below. Make sure to subscribe or die. And more importantly, don't forget to pay my medal.